Hello, wonderful spooky fam. Welcome back to another spooky video. And another r slash no sleep subreddit reading because I feel like for the first week of October and kind of sprinkled throughout there, this would be a great video. Yes. So I'm here with my naked drink, pina colada, 10 grams of fiber to keep me hydrated throughout this whole thing. This is going to be an interesting story because I haven't covered one like this before. Let's get right into it. Suppressed statement regarding the death of, of Mitchell Avery. Statement of Jeremiah Wilson regarding the death of Mitchell Avery. Recorded 1 10 2XXX regarding the events of 9122XXX at Redacted Hospital, located at Redacted. Dr. Jeremiah Wilson, which will be called JW by now, from now on. Look, I want it on record here that I wasn't involved from the start. I came in about a day before Avery and, uh, passed away. Interviewer's name redacted. Of course, doctor. So, we're recording now. The statement is on record. Please talk about what happened in your own words. By the time that I met Avery, he'd already suffered some wounds at the hands of well, whatever it was. They all looked like the same. Like someone had taken a linoleum cutter the size of my leg and just scooped out some of his flesh. Went right through his skin and muscle. Once through each, once each on his arm and abdomen. And then so low, he had lost a couple of toes. I thought that I had been called to consult on the care that Avery was getting, but it turned out that they just wanted my opinion on what had caused that damage. Why did they call you in? Beats the hell out of me. I don't have any forensics training besides the basics. It turned out that I had been the last one they called in. The detective looked, was looking pretty pissed. Detective Reynolds. Right, he wanted answers, and he wanted them now, damn it. Well, we didn't have any. The lab was still analyzing the wound patterns and the residue found around each one. Weird stuff. Bright purple. And what happened then? Well, the detective stormed out of the room, and the weirdest thing, EMT, followed him. I hadn't even noticed he was there. I just figured he knew Avery or something. He seemed upset. He and the detective were talking in the chapel, and I heard raised voices. I went over to listen. Reynolds was all, I know what he said. The EMT said, well, we needed to keep him awake then. Reynolds went completely nuts. He said the F word too, you know. Then the EMT came back and headed for the ER. There's a parking lot out there, so I figured that he was heading home. Detective Reynolds walked the other way, right past me. He started shouting at the nurse that we'd left with Avery. He clearly wanted Avery to remain awake no matter what. Another weird thing then, Avery was crying. I looked at his chart. I knew he couldn't have been in pain. What happened then? Well... I figured that whatever was going on in there, I didn't need to be part of. But I was curious, you know? So I called, uh, I had a friend call up Avery's records so I could take a deeper look. And? Well, the detective was right. Avery was crazy. He'd come to the ER with one of those wounds, one of them taped like it had been done by a drunk monkey, and the other one brand new. He told the admitting doctor that, he ha that it had happened in his sleep. And later he made a statement that whenever he slipped off to sleep for the last couple days, something had taken a bite out of him. Something? He didn't know what it was? Well, he was always asleep when he got bitten. He claimed that he never saw what did it, but he could sure feel it. I figured he'd convince a detective, too, because Reynolds was all about making sure Avery didn't get anything that would put him to sleep. By this time, I was fascinated, so I went back down to Avery's room. The nurse nodded at me, but Reynolds had gone. I tracked him down and found him sitting in the ER sitting room. Then I sat down next to him and told him that I wanted to help him find out what was going on and that I knew and I told him what I knew and he snorted. He said he that I didn't have the whole story. And what did that mean? Reynolds told me that Avery had gotten the latest wound, the one that he taken off that had taken off his toes earlier that night. He said that he'd moved Avery to a safe house somewhere that no one could find him, and whatever it was doing this had found him anyway. 
He had planned to bring Avery here tomorrow, but he was bleeding and Reynolds didn't want to wait. Did Detective Reynolds say anything about what might happen to doing this to Avery? Not that he told me. He just wanted to see if I, if we had any ideas. I told him that I didn't, but that I'd look around and see if there was anything. Reynolds just nodded to me and stood up to head back to Avery's room. I decided to follow. I told myself it was so I could get a closer look at the wounds to see if anything might jog my memories. But the truth is that this is the most interesting thing I'd seen in a long time. Right. Understandable. What then? Well, I saw Reynolds stop and talk to the doctor who was in charge of Avery's case. I hadn't learned her name yet, but I planned to. She looks a type who might appreciate a man of advancing years. Gotta keep on track, doctor. What happened then? I got there about the time that Reynolds had asked, asked her what she'd given Avery. He seemed very upset, and I could understand. If anything about Avery's story is true, going to sleep would only hurt him more. That's, this doctor, she smiled and named a sedative that I, re that I recognized. I grabbed Reynolds by the arm and said, that's not supposed to put them to sleep. It puts them in a kind of in-between state, but it works by altering the brain waves, so that way you keep ducking in and out of phase one sleep. Reynolds got it right away. Avery was bitten every time that he fell asleep, and suddenly he was going, bam, bam, bam. He got it just about the time the nurse I'd seen in Avery's room went to check on him. I will never forget that scream. What happened next? Well, I was right behind Reynolds. There was some blood on the mattress and the floors, even some on the walls, but outside of that... Yes? 23 seconds of silence. There wasn't a whole lot left. End statement. That was a great story in my opinion. <laughs> I didn't even need to take a drink today. Wow. That's great. Not sleeping tonight. No, I'm not sleeping tonight. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you in my next one tomorrow. Bye.